How's it going? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can make an aluminum repair out in the field on those coils, whether it's a micro channel coil, a standard tube and fin coil, as long as it's aluminum, we can get it repaired. And I'm going to show you the tools and the products that you need. Let's do it. This video is sponsored by RLS, original, patented, proven, and by Diversitech, helping you simplify your work. All right, so to start things out, let's talk about the tools that we're going to need to be able to make the repair. Now, we can go one of two ways. We could do an oxacetylene kit like most people have for a typical copper brazing, or we can use a map gas torch like this. And I'm going to recommend going this route if you have one, just because it's a lower heat, it's more controllable, and aluminum is really thin, and the, the melting point is a lot lower than copper, so you can actually burn a hole very quickly in that. So using something like this, it's gonna be a lot more controllable, especially when you're first starting out. All right, so let's get the tools off the table here. Grab this coil. All right, so this is a pretty standard aluminum indoor coil that we have. Um, it's pretty dirty, it's old one used. We ripped it out um, from an old system. So I've got a couple of holes here that I punctured and we'll, we'll repair those. Now I'm gonna start off with the uh, map gas torch setup because that's what I'm gonna recommend, like I said earlier, to use. Um, it's just way more controllable. So I'm gonna use the kit that I use all the time. And before I get started, safety glasses. All right, so when it comes to these aluminum rods, these things act differently than brazing. So because you have a flux that you have to work with, and these things are very low melting point, so you gotta be careful. You don't wanna just crank up the heat and melt it right away. So go ahead and kinda get yourself prepped. You wanna open up your flux, get your rod ready. So what we're gonna do, before I turn this on and it gets loud, I'm going to Turn on my torch, I'm gonna to heat up the tip of my rod just for a couple seconds. Doesn't take long. Just get it warm. We're gonna dip it into the flux to where the flux coats the rod. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold it on the, the point of repair and we're gonna melt the flux off of the rod onto the joint, right? That's step number one. And then you're gonna remove and then you're gonna heat up the, the repair uh, site there. And once that white flux starts to clear, then you know the temperature of your aluminum is up to 600 degrees and that's when your rod will actually melt. So then at that point, you wanna lay the rod on to, um, onto the hole. You don't wanna push it in like you normally would on a brazing rod. You wanna actually lay it on there and melt the rod over the hole and then you can smooth it out and there you go. You'll be good to go. So one thing to note about the flux, is that it actually helps uh, prep the site so that way the rod will adhere to it, right? So there's a special word that they use and I can't think of it right now, but basically cleans it and preps it and gets it ready to where you'll have a good tight bond with the rod. All right, so first step, let's heat the rod up and dip it in the flux. You notice like you don't gotta crank it up. We we can keep it nice and low like that. So I'm just gonna roll it, roll it in the heat for a couple seconds. Take the flux, just dip it in there and twist it until you see a nice clump of uh, a flux there. Now we're gonna take it and we're gonna melt the flux onto the, onto the hole here. Let it cover the hole. Don't burn off your stickers. So now I'm gonna heat up that aluminum until I see it get clear. There you go. Now I'm gonna melt the rod over the hole, like laying it on top. See how it does that? And now you can kind of smooth it out. It's good to take your time. So you don't overheat it and create a hole. See how quick, 
I don't know if you noticed that, but it almost wanted to burn a hole through the aluminum. Like it's very sensitive. So you gotta make sure that you're just kind of feathering the heat and taking your time and paying attention to where you can remove that heat quickly if it goes, um, <laughs> if you end up burning a hole. And I've burned a hole before. So you know what I may end up doing as well is, is burn a hole through it on purpose just so I can show you how to make that repair because that's another skill. If you accidentally burn a hole that's a good size, you need to, you need to know how to be able to lay that rod over the hole and, uh, to repair it. So, cause it's gonna happen. But that did a good job. I was, I almost burned all the way through, but I, I didn't. So the biggest takeaway from this is it's not brazing. You don't wanna just go all in with all this heat. You wanna just back off, take your time because you will burn a hole very quick. So let's, uh, let's do that next, I think. I'm gonna go ahead and burn a hole into this one here like I did on accident, and then we're gonna try to repair it. So that way you can save your butt when you're out in the field and you don't have to replace the whole coil. All right, so this is, you know, for testing purposes here, obviously, I just burned a good sized hole through there. So let's say we got to get this system up and running. Let's see if we can get this fixed. So same concept. Turn your torch down. I'll try to start from the top. Basically lay it on there, break it off, and just keep going. Lay it on there, break it off. Lay it on there, break it off. Come on. I think that would be fine. All right, sometimes you want to uh, not take it so serious as far as making it look absolutely perfect because it is so sensitive, it could all just fall right off if you get it too hot. So the main thing is getting it to where it's leak free. If it doesn't look the best, that's fine. The main thing is getting it leak free so the system can get operational again. So there you go. Map gas torch, I was able to fill a decent sized hole, which is very possible to happen when you're in the field. And that's how you'd repair it. Just take your time and you wanna just keep laying uh, the rod over and over and over and stacking it all the way down and then go over the whole thing, kind of smooth it out until it looks like it's good and sealed. So really what I would recommend is next time you are um, you have a change out, if you're an install guy or if you're a service guy, go to the shop, ask if they have any old aluminum coils and take it home. Get the kit, get the map gas torch and just start practicing. You know, practice makes perfect. The only way you're gonna know how this stuff is working is by doing it. You can't just watch this video and then be like, oh, I got it. You need, to, you need to put your hands on it. You need to be laying down in a weird spot um, because that's how it is when you're in the field, right? If you're working in an attic or a crawl space, whatever application you're in, you're gonna be in a difficult spot. It's not always gonna be upright like I have it today. So practice in those weird situations, practice on all these different types of locations. Um, and then if you have the kit for the Alcop, I would recommend cutting off this little uh, rubber piece here, getting to that joint and start practicing on the copper to aluminum as well, because I've seen those fail. Ah, and you know, again, the more you do it, the better you're gonna get at it, because this to me is the future. I mean, we see it all over now, but it's going more and more and more down the path of we're getting away from the copper um, 
style tube and fin coils to the solid aluminum like we have here. So you got to be able to know how to make these repairs. Micro channel coils, those are aluminum, right? Those have leaks as well. You got to figure out and learn how to be able to fix those as well. So it's all about your skill set, right? You, wanna, you don't want to just wait when you're on the job to figure this stuff out. Obviously, if you're watching this video, you are trying to educate yourself and have continuing education. So go home. You know, if you have a spot in your driveway or in your shed, it doesn't matter. Start working on this stuff and start building up those skills to where when you go out in the field, you have the confidence to do what you need to do to make those repairs and ultimately serve your customer better. So anyway, that's going to end today's video. I really appreciate you guys being here. Give it a thumbs up if you like what I'm doing. Subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, until next time, see you guys later.